Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number two of this NHL 23 Washington Capitals franchise mode here in the nation's capital on my channel. Today, we are getting into what is going to be the second half of the 2022-23 season. And really, we had a lot of comments off of the last video, of the first video. Again, if you missed it, go back and check it out to kind of just see what direction we're heading. But again, we're going to kind of recap with the comments and what direction we're going to go with with this team. But uh, the comments were fairly clear for the most part, um, but there are a couple things we need to address. So let's get to it, take a look at these comments and get going here. So I think one of the first comments that we definitely need to address here comes from Owen Parks saying, not watching the next episode if there's no trade up for the next Ovechkin. So if you guys don't know what that is referencing, we'll go over a few other comments here. I think Dylan Rude definitely summed it up just by saying trade for Michkov. And then Brady Morris as well said, I think you should try to pick up Stromberg and Michkov in the draft. But this season, try to make a run, maybe Spurgeon. So Spurgeon was a player he was recommending. But apart from that, the trend is even if we don't land a top three pick, try to trade up for Matt Vemichkov. That is the goal here with this team. That is what we're going to try to do. And the other player there that was referenced was this guy here, Christian Stromberg. Um, currently looking like a really good player. NHL ready, puck on a string. Honestly, kind of looks like the next Backstrom. I do think he's going to be a playmaker, just based on the A-plus puck skills there. But yeah, he looks like a very solid center too, and uh, that's a guy we're probably going to want to go out and get. So, apart from those comments, we had a few others here. Um, Hunter Monty said, would love to see Cop on the team, but to replace Orlov, maybe go for Lindgren or Miller from the Rangers. So, we're now rolling into what is at least two or three different names that we can pursue, at least on defense. Um, so I'm going to write these names in, just make sure that we actually get them in here. So a comment here from Jeremy Moser said, try to get Reinbacker. So that's an interesting one because yes, Reinbacker would be a great addition to our defensive prospect pool, mainly because we don't have a super great defensive prospect pool right now. It's not bad. It's probably better than our forwards actually, but again, the Capitals prospect pool is fairly weak for the most part. The next comment came from Braden Cream saying, you should trade for Michkov and try to get Ovi another cup. So yes, that's exactly the goal here as to what we're going to pursue. And finally, uh, from Nathan Urau or Unrau. Yeah, Nathan Unrau, sorry, uh, said, while we're on the subject of Washington, shout out to Hershey for winning the Calder Cup in real life. So yes, that is definitely shout out worthy and something that totally applies to this series. And finally, the last comment from Stefan Hopper now said, ah, no X factors on Wilson tragic. So with those comments, I'll be featuring the rest of the comments that were put in the video down below kind of here with the text uh, at the bottom. But Really, we can add an X factor or two to Wilson. Um, I think he definitely is deserving of them, whether that be truculence because he absolutely throws devastating body checks or maybe like, I don't know, close quarters. He's actually pretty skilled around the front of the net. He's not a bad player that way. Um, I think those are actually both were the X factors for Tom Wilson. So yeah, let's uh, let's give those to him. I think that would actually be be totally worth it as far as what he can do so yeah let's uh let's get to that so he's getting i don't know if we give him gold truculence necessarily but uh yeah let's do that and maybe yeah like crease crasher in close quarters as well that's probably uh probably good for tom wilson honestly i think that's probably about all we're gonna do for him the fact that tj oshi has more x factors than wilson's funny and apart from that not really gonna throw too many other x factors on there for now so apart from that um i do want to just address the draft a little more with you guys because that is something we need to pay attention to coming up but yeah looking at the draft class obviously we want to go out and get Michkov at the draft, but that's going to be a draft day move. That's going to be something we focus more on when it actually happens. Christian Stromberg is a guy that we could potentially be in the range for, and is probably a guy we're going to get. I think he's going to be the next Nicholas Backstrom, honestly, and that's what the plan is, is to go out and get him around 15, 16, somewhere like that. Reinbacker is going to be tougher to get just because three first round picks is really hard to acquire in one season without like depleting the rest of your team in any way. 
And then apart from that, I think once we get down into the second round, that's where we're really going to make our pickup. So I'm really interested in this Stanislav Butsayev guy. Um, probably going to be a playmaker, but I'm almost certain he's going to be a low elite with that many X factors. Apart from him, we've got two other guys here in Colby Chung, who looks like, again, a sniper probably on the left wing. That's a right-handed shot. So yeah, he could fit in nicely on like a second line if we had Butsayev on the top line. And then there's this guy too, Corey Hendricks, who's a one-year ETA potentially, um, and is probably, he could be a sniper, he could be a playmaker on that wing. So yeah, um, keep an eye on those guys. We're going to try to get them. I'm not so convinced on Avery Oda, apart from maybe the two-year ETA that he's actually like an elite player or anything. But yeah, we've got uh, a bit of a bit of a short list started there as to guys who we want to get. And then after that, it's kind of up in the air for the tail end and further on in the draft, apart from the first two rounds. So yeah, expect us to probably be getting a couple picks here coming up. Um, but we're also going to be trying to make some winning deals that still keep this team consistently good. So that is the setup as to what we're going to try to do here in this episode. I honestly think with the way our team's set up that we maybe actually try to trade lower end or like bottom six kind of forwards for um, like better pieces, whether that be better defensive pieces or we don't really need a better goalie. We literally just need like some better deals as far as getting pieces back for players. Like, you know, while Strom's a really good player and a good piece to this team, he's on a one-year deal and I feel like we could get something better back, like a, a similar replacement piece plus a pick kind of thing. So that's going to be the goal here. Okay, so the first trade I think we're going to roll with here after running it through the fine trade is, honestly, I'm looking at this deal and this looks great. Um, we would be trading what would be Trevor Van Riemsdyk, who's an undrafted 31-year-old, and Marcus Johansson, who, again, I believe is on Minnesota in real life. Uh, I might be wrong there, but I think he is. Um, trading those two pieces both on one-year deals in exchange for a 22-year-old Keandre Miller, who looks like a beast, and as long as we can sign him, he's going to be a beast for years to come. So let's roll with this deal. It's a great deal in my opinion, and uh, yeah, wow, like I can't believe they're actually offering this. And the other thing too, guys, I'm going to make this trade, but the other thing I will absolutely go and show you is the fact that... Um, We'll, we'll deal with our lines in a minute here, but is the fact that we are playing on hard trade difficulty. And I absolutely am going to just double check, double show that so you guys aren't questioning me. Um, because yeah, like this is crazy that we actually just got that trade offer in exchange on hard trade difficulty. So there, there you have it. It's all in video proof, but holy, that is a great first trade for this team as far as what we're going to do here. So yeah, landing Keandre Miller is a huge piece for us. Um, even if he doesn't fit perfectly well, he's going to be really good still. So yeah, I'm extremely happy with how that just went. Um, the next thing we're going to do, let's see. Well, we're going to try to get another, in my opinion, it's going to be a top six piece. Okay, so something else we're going to do here quickly is make sure Keandre Miller can wear number 79. I believe he can. I don't see why he wouldn't be wearing it. Oh no, Charlie Lindgren's wearing it. Okay, let's give him number... Um, do we go 97? Nah, that looks kind of stupid because it's McDavid. Let's go number 16 because 9 plus 7 is 16. That actually looks really good. And yeah, okay, that's what we'll go with. And okay, apart from that... Okay, apart from that, um, I do think we need to strengthen our right side a little bit more on the defensive end. So what we're going to do there is go for, if we can find a trade, I don't know if we'll be able to, um, is go for a Jarrett Spurgeon trade. So what we're going to do in that scenario, because Spurgeon holds some fairly decent value, is we're going to be sending Orlov the other way. But apart from that, um, yeah, it's going to be tough to kind of get anything else in return because Spurgeon is so good. So we'll go with that, but then we're going to roll with, man, that is some thunder outside. Um, hmm. Do we go with the fake Ludwig Persons? Because again, I duplicated him. Might not be the worst idea ever. 
We either do that or we do Lars Eller as well. Washington's over the max cap. Ooh. Well, we can't do that either because that just doesn't work. He's making way too much money on this team. Mantha's a big contract, but we can't necessarily get rid of him. What if we went Carl Hagelin? We send Hagelin the other way, that might get it done. And now Minnesota's got too many players. Oh, goodness gracious. Could we take to Kaiser too? Would that get the deal done? I don't know if this actually goes through because of the second round pick. We might have to go with a third instead, but uh, honestly, I want to get a pick pack. And yes, by doing this, we are kind of depleting our older player reserves in the system, but let's try this and see if it goes through. Okay, so I honestly don't think this trade's gonna go through, but it might, and let's try it. And yeah, it doesn't go through, so let's take the third rounder off, try it again, and still doesn't go through. Okay, so we're gonna have to throw something else on this deal. It's not gonna be Darren Bjorklund, it's not gonna be pretty much any of these prospects because we need all of those guys, and if we're gonna make a Michkov trade, I think Marosh Nishenko is probably gonna be required to do so. I honestly think that's how this is going to go. So yeah, as unfortunate as that is, I don't think we can necessarily make a move here um, for Spurgeon. As much as I want to, and I think he'd be a really good right side addition to this team, um, we just have to give up too much of something else. So the only other way I could see us pulling this trade off is maybe if we sent a guy like Mantha the other way. And in exchange, I mean, I would be wanting a pick if we're giving up a top six winger like that. So let's try this. This might go through. Spurgeon a second for Mantha and Orlov. Um, it makes Minnesota better, and they're a winning team right now too. So let's see. No, trade value's not there. What if we remove the second? Would that then go through? It's a two for one. It's not a great deal, but it's not particularly bad either because, again, like Anthony Mantha's only two years left. Yeah, okay, let's try this. And still doesn't go through. Man, oh man, I'm not, not paying that much for Jared Spurgeon. I'm sorry, but yeah, that would have been a guy that maybe we went for, but no, it doesn't look like it's going to be the case. So we need a better right D-man. Who is it going to be? Is it going to be... Oh, Klingberg is not horrible. He is injured right now, and he's 7 million. Anaheim's going to want draft capital and other things like that, though, so maybe that's not exactly the move. What about Nate Schmidt? How good or bad is he? He's not great. He's not bad, though, either. Um, and he could totally play right side, even though he's left-handed. Maybe we go for a Nate Schmidt pickup. That could be all right. It wouldn't be a one for... I mean, it would pretty much be a one for one, but I'd want to pick in exchange. They do a second, we can do like a third. That that could be a fairly even trade. Let's try it. Go stand. Alright, so we're going to try this deal, Orlov in a third in exchange for Schmidt in a second. I think it should go through. And, oh, it doesn't. Okay, so what about Schmidt in a third straight up for Orlov? You gotta be kidding me. You're not gonna, you're not gonna give up your third round pick. Give me a freaking break.
second rounder next year for a third rounder this year. Come on. I'm not making a one for one, and I'm not taking a fourth round pick. I'll take a third round pick next year at worst. Okay, this is like my last try with Winnipeg. If that's not the case, then I'm not making this deal. And it does go through. Okay. All right, so we straight up just trade Dmitry Orlov to Winnipeg for Nate Schmidt and a 2024 third round pick. So it's okay, not the best deal ever, but again, we get a similar kind of defenseman, a guy that used to play for this organization um, that can play the right side and is going to be a very solid D-man in my opinion uh, in exchange for what is, again, going to be a pick and just, yeah, overall improvement of this team. So... Let's see, Fairvari and Jensen is not a great pairing, unfortunately. Like, that's not working as well as I want it to. And I don't know if there is a way to get it to work as well as I want to, unfortunately. So, Schmidt and Miller together should be fine. Um, Carlson and Sandine together is good, too. And then, really, if we just lose one of these guys, which, in my opinion, would be Jensen... Um, if we trade Jensen in a deal that also gets us a forward or like something more along those lines, I think that would really help too. Yeah, okay. I think that's kind of the goal here as to what we're going to do. And yeah, I, I don't mind where the team's at right now. We just need a little bit more improvement here. And honestly, a guy like Connor Brown can almost play in our top six over quite a few of these other guys. And, yeah, okay, that, that's not looking bad at all. Okay, guys, so another team I've kind of picked up on here, it wasn't so much in the comments, but more so just a team that I kind of picked out on my own as having some good assets that we could potentially exploit, um, is going to be the Vegas Golden Knights. And we're going to try to get Nick Hag and Aiden Hill, potentially. They'd want Miller straight up, Fiafari and Protas. Uh, Shiri and Protest, Protest and two thirds, or Borgstrom and two thirds. Okay, those aren't bad deals at all. Um, the one I'd probably go with would be probably Feavari and Protest, just because that way, yes, we're giving up some prospect kind of guys, but again, they're like not crazy potential. Hag's gonna outvalue everybody here in a year or two. So that's more so what I'm focused on here in this deal. Aiden Hill comes in as a backup rather than Lindgren. And again, he was able to win a cup with Vegas in real life. So I think this is the trade we're going to go with here. And I think this is really going to benefit our organization. Um, actually, I don't want to give up Feavari. And Shiri's a little bit older and not going to stick with the team for as long. So let's go with that one instead of making a slightly safer trade here. All right, so we'll rip that trade. That's gonna be a good one. And now really all this leaves us with is signing Nick Hag for one. Um, so that's gonna be a potential, a potentially difficult thing to do with no cap space uh, because yes, we literally have 400K cap space. And Nick Hag wants, oh. Okay, so I didn't sewer us, but I also didn't make the best trade there because we're past the RFA deadline. So Nick Hag holds his value, um, or holds below market value because we can't sign him, but we've got a good defenseman there for next year, and I'm going to stick with that decision as much as it didn't quite click in my head. Um, so yeah, we'll go with that, and honestly, Nick Hag is going to be a nice backup or nice top four piece for this team in the near future. So yes, that, that still works, even though he doesn't get to compete this year. I'm okay with that. And apart from that, I think we're only going to make one other deal here. So the last player I want to move here is Garnet Hathaway, because again, I feel like we can go and get some other better kind of pieces in exchange for him that, again, don't necessarily require us um, 
to like alter what actually happened as far as him getting traded in real life. So let's just see what's up for trade for a guy like Hathaway. Honestly, I don't think there's going to be too, too much, but um, let's see what's, what's available. Okay, so the last trade I'm going to attempt here, guys, is we're going to try to trade Dylan Strom, our 2024 third, and Garnet Hathaway to LA in exchange for Alex Iafalo, Gabriel Velarde, and Jared Anderson Dolan, which honestly is very similar to the trade that literally happened the day of this recording, um, except with Winnipeg, with Pierre-Luc Dubois going the other way rather than Dylan Strom in this worst package, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, let's try this. If this goes through, I'm going to be super happy about it. And it doesn't. Okay, so what if we throw a 2025 second on there? That's what I'm going to try instead. And I really hope it goes through, uh, just based on higher value. And it does. Perfect. All right, so that was a big deal because not only now do we get Gabe Velarde, who fits into our team immediately, but we can move Lars Eller up. And that's just gonna make, oh, makes things difficult cap space wise. But apart from cap space, we can just move Heglin down. Okay, so we're gonna, I guess we're gonna send Dowd and Heglin down for Eller, um, which is fine by me. Um, we'll make it work. But yeah, um, wow, <laughs> we just disassembled our bottom six there. <laughs> All right. So let's throw Lars Eller in here. Give Velarde on the fourth line. Uh, I have follow playing second, or sorry, third line. He should actually be playing second, probably. Um, but you know what? That'll work. That's actually a very solid second or third line. And then if we have Anderson Dolan on the wing, that's all good by me. All right, so we don't really lose too many assets while we also acquire a bunch of really good ones. I'm quite happy with how that went, actually because I didn't think we were actually going to be able to land a guy like Keandre Miller or Nicholas Haig or Gabe Velarde or Alex Iafalo. Like, I'm really happy with those pieces that we brought in. And while the team might not look any stronger than it did before, I'm, I, I honestly think it does. Like, I think we strengthened our bottom six for the most part. Our fourth line isn't great, but we're rolling three lines anyways. Um, our defense... I think it got better, honestly, even though you guys might question it a little bit. Um, I'm actually quite happy with how that went. I think we start Keandre Miller on the bottom line just because we kind of kind of have to, uh, chemistry-wise. Or we could go like that, actually. Feavari on the top line isn't terrible for me. I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually okay with that. <sighs> we can't quite get it any other way apart from that. So yeah, Miller and... It's roll all pairings, so it shouldn't be that bad. I'm actually quite happy with the evenness of the pairings. So yeah, that is our NHL team there now. It's uh, definitely a lot different than it just was. Um, and we got Nick Dowd in here in the system. So we're going to throw him up on the probably top line. All the lines are set there now. We're ready to go. And that is all we're going to rip for trades. And we're just going to let it sit back and sim. And hopefully our team makes the playoffs. But uh Really, we are sitting in a playoff spot with lots of games in hand, too. Like, we're actually playing quite well right now. So, yeah, there you have it for trades. Let's see how the sim treats us here. Um, but I am actually just going to go and save progress because that was so many trades. And if, like, there's a bit of a thunderstorm going on outside right now, and man, oh, man, if, like, the power cuts out and I lose all my progress, I'm going to be really upset. <laughs> So yeah, let's do that. Um, normally I don't like save files mid game. Usually it's at the end of a recording and kind of thing, but let's start with the first month, see how our team does. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how those trades went, but we lose our first game. We beat Montreal and Buffalo, lose an OT to Florida and lose to the Islanders right after that. But we beat the Vegas Golden Knights and then lose to Buffalo, beat Dallas. Okay, so we're, we're doing all right. I think we dropped a little in the standings there, but honestly, it's not really significant. And we are still kind of sitting around that same mark, so that's not great. Uh, we lose two more games there. That's pushing it now. We are in a tough division, too. So what I thought was going to really help this team as far as trades and growth goes maybe isn't going to be as effective as I initially thought. Yeah, that's not great. So we'll see what happens here. So yeah, Ovi's got, oh, only 27 goals in 43 games. That's not great. 
I really was expecting more goals out of him. Um, let's try Backstrom on the top line, see if that helps with his assist totals because Kuznetsov isn't passing the puck quite as well. So let's continue on here. We lose to Philly. Oh boy, okay, that was a lot of losses. And we uh, have put ourselves in a tough position here. We are currently, oh man, we're almost nine cards out of the wild, or nine spots out of, nine points out of the wild card spot. I can't speak today apparently either, so. Yeah, uh, not looking super great there for our team based on the fact that I thought we were going to be in a playoff spot here at this point. So let's continue on with the sim. It's not looking great. The game's really not treating us too well today. Um, yeah, that's all I can really say about that because really, I thought this team was going to win a lot more based on the trades we just made and how we influenced the team. But okay, we went a couple there, um, but really not a great start here going. And... I did reject a Gavrikov trade, probably should have accepted that one because our defense hasn't been spectacular. And then we win four in a row, lose one game there, but we're like pushing the playoff spot there. We are so close. Now we are literally four points out with six games in hand. We got so many games in hand, that's the difference. So yeah, um, as we head into the trade deadline here, I think we will jump in, just see what other kind of options there are but let's see just go from there kind of see who's on the block who we could potentially get i mean a tyler bertuzzi would be pretty nice but i don't think that's going to happen joe pavelski same kind of deal as far as being an older player yeah okay so not spectacular there um for free agency or uh, not free agency but potential trades we're not trading a first rounder for Bertuzzi necessarily, so... Okay, so I think we're going to tap out there. We got a couple trades, but really, I think we're, we're good with where we're at. Um, I think this team has the necessary pieces to, one, make the playoffs, but also, two, make some draft moves if necessary. So let's see how we finish off the year. We're 33-30 and 30 heading into the final um, month and a bit of the year. And really, I think we can win enough games to make it here. But we might not. It might go south. But let's see how we do. And we start off with three. Oh, man. We start off with a bunch of losses. We do beat the Wings. Ooh, and then lose really badly. 8-3 to the Rangers. Okay. So, <coughs> oh. Excuse me, but we, uh, yeah, we might be in what is going to be more so, um, kind of like, <sighs> it's going to be, going to be very likely not, um, not a playoff spot here, because, yeah, we're, uh, yeah, it's not looking great. I also realized I totally skipped over a ton of scouting that I need to do, so I'm going to jump back in and do that quickly. Okay, so getting back from a little bit of scouting here, because I missed quite a bit. Um, let's see how the rest of April goes. We got two weeks. We need a lot of wins. So, okay, we get two there. That's good. Come on. Oh, and then we lose the next three. Make it next four, five. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, so this might actually be a parallel to real life. We're 37 and 39. We pretty much need to win every single game for the rest of the season just to get in. Come on, boys. Beat Buffalo. Let's go. Okay, so we get that win. Got a back-to-back -back against Carolina and New York. We win against Carolina. Come on, boys. Are we going to sneak in? Oh, and we lose to New York. Not great. Okay, come on. We got to beat Winnipeg here. And we don't. And that might be it for the playoff hopes. We'll see. We got to win our last two games here. We do win one. Oh boy, oh boy, this could be interesting. Actually, I think we are eliminated now that I'm looking at it. I think we are eliminated, so it doesn't matter. The, the season is a bust. We don't, unfortunately, we get 86 points going 40, 36, and 6, but it's not enough. And oh, 86 points is, yeah, that's not great. All right, well, it looks like the Coyotes have got the best odds at Bedard here. Um, Chicago and a few other teams didn't tank it quite as hard as they did in real life, but uh, still somewhat similar for the most part, except for maybe, like, Columbus making... Well, they didn't even make the playoffs, but they uh, they were there. The Maple Leafs barely sneak in. Who else was a bit of a shocker? Uh, the Flames barely sneak in as well. 
Winnipeg and St. Louis. Yeah, Winnipeg misses and Dallas. That's uh, that's an interesting one. Okay, so yeah, um, definitely some stranger things going on here this season. Ovechkin misses two games, but scores 80 and 80, so he's still a point per game there. And yeah, not the greatest season here overall from the, uh, the team. Yeah. All right, guys. So this season, the Washington Capitals finished 23rd in the league. Um, so yeah, that's going to be like 8th, ninth best odds in the draft. So it's not great. But you never know. We could potentially move up. Um, that could be fun. But I highly doubt that's going to happen with other teams like Chicago and Arizona and teams like that at the bottom. But yeah, Carolina wins the uh, wins the President's Trophy this year. Uh, Ovechkin and Backstrom go for 80 each. Not bad at all. Um, really impressed with those guys. And then the rest of the team was kind of, they were all right. But, you know, kind of disappointing for the most part. Um, and yeah, only 33 points for Ayafalo. He only scored 12 after the LA move. That's not great. And our best rookie there in Jonas, or Jonsson Falby is, yeah, not, not great there either. Kemper only won 32 out of 69. That's not good enough again either. And yeah, that was our team. Just a little bit disappointing this year. So McDavid scores 106. Uh, Matthew scores 104. Really, the scoring is down this year quite a bit. Um, yeah, okay. So maybe that shot frequency then? I'm guessing that would probably be the thing that kind of turns it down or tunes it down a little bit on the scoring. So maybe we bump shot frequency up too. Um, but yeah, normally like McDavid's at least like 110, 115 kind of. So let's go toy with that in the settings a little bit. I actually am realizing now I totally missed another comment here too. Another comment that I totally missed came from Stefan Hopper now and saying, not sure if you've experimented with the attribute effect in general settings, but I find the Sims are more accurate when it is seven to nine instead of five. So um, I don't know exactly where that is, but we'll find it and adjust it. <laughs> but apart from that, um, we're going to bump sim engine shot frequency up to high and then leave the draft class kind of just on mid there. And okay, I think that is it there. Okay, so we're going to bump attribute effect up to eight um, and see how that goes. Um, but hopefully that'll make things a little bit more realistic based on each player and then game speed yeah okay three out of six should be fine you can't imagine six out of six that would be insane but um yeah all right let's uh get to sim in here and doing a little bit more scouting but that is a wrap for the first season here um the only other thing i didn't show you guys with the ahl we went 37 38 and 7 down there and again missed the playoffs with hershey so they aren't even going to be winning the uh the calder cup this year unfortunately but that is what it is. Again, our team is kind of all over the place down there as well as up here. Um, but, you know, Maroshnashenko grows a little bit, gets up to a 72. So not bad there. Um, but really, overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with our team and our development. And just we are in a decent spot in spite of not having the best team ever. <sighs> all right, guys. So that wraps up this regular season. It didn't quite go as well as I had hoped. We tried some trades and, uh, you know, things just didn't quite quite go as according to plan as I had hoped, but you know, we still got 35 regular season sellouts and now we just get to sim ahead to the draft and hopefully the uh, playoffs go well and are exciting. <laughs> All right guys, so this season we see the Colorado Avalanche win back-to-back -back Stanley Cup championships and the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins win the Calder Cup this season. Something else I noticed is that the Avalanche and Lightning both repeated as Stanley Cup finalists. Like if we go and look at this like that's that's just crazy man pretty much the almost identical series to last year and yeah like look at the award winners right colorado with the stanley cup and apparently it's not going to show eastern and western conference champions now because of it being custom league but looking at the awards mcdavid wins another art ross and hart uh, morgan riley wins the norris this year artemi panarin with lady bing nick robertson with the calder uh, landis gog gets the consummate this year freddie anderson with the vesna um, Anderson and Ranta with the Jennings, um, Ben Sherratt, I forgot his first name there for a second, with the uh, Detroit Red Wings, gets the Masterton, uh, Pessinger for LA gets the Jack Adams, Ryan O'Reilly with the Selkie this year, beating out Bergeron, interesting, um, and McDavid with the Lindsay, and Matthews with the Rockets.
Alright, so to wrap up this episode, guys, we are going to hit the draft lottery, see where each team's picks land and where they end up, and hopefully we win a lottery move up to at least top two, top three. That would be gorgeous if that's the case. And here it comes. And, oh, Pittsburgh's going to move from four to two. We're stuck at pick ten. Okay. Chicago from two to three is not great because, yeah. Okay, so it looks like Bedard will be landing in Arizona. That was like, you know, alternate reality kind of thing that might possibly happen. There's no way. Pittsburgh lands Fantilli. Man, okay, so we're going to be trying to make a really difficult trade with Chicago to land Fantilli. I highly doubt it happens, but you never know. Montreal will likely get Leo Carlson. And yeah, Anaheim's in there too, so they'll get a really solid player. But at pick 10, you know, I think we can land... Um, What's his name? Um, Christian Stromberg. I think that would be a very smart pick. And I think that's pretty much where we're going to land here and end up. So, yeah, obviously we don't win two playoff games. But, yeah, um, Mitrov's going to be a difficult player to trade up for. But uh, hopefully we'll be able to land him. And then, yes, of course, we've got Christian Stromberg, who is NHL ready. Playmaker looks really good. Um, yeah, keep an eye on him. We will be taking him at pick 10 for sure. And then I don't know if we're going to be able to get Ryan back or not, but after that, we got Casper Halton in as a full bar elite here. Um, so maybe we try to get him too. That wouldn't necessarily hurt. Um, it would help with our draft value at least. And then, yeah, look at these guys in here. Like, this is just pick after pick after pick. Three low elites in a row. We ne definitely need these guys um, as far as future prospects go. And yeah, as second rounders, I am absolutely going to scoop them up for not next to nothing, but for very little value considering what they're eventually going to be worth one day. So yeah, I've got all these guys pinned out for full bar scouting, um, except for Mads and Leslie, who just never scouted properly. Uh, but yeah, we'll probably take him too, honestly. And then I found a couple low elites further back here, um, just with drafting and pinning out picks and finding guys. So yeah, um, this Clarkson guy I kind of want to get, but I don't think he's quite going to be as good as I am scouting this guy still, but I do think he's going to be a medium elite because there's always one American goalie that's a medium elite, and I think it's going to be that guy uh, there in Kemp. Let's see who else is still being scouted. Samsonov, not quite full bar elite, so he could be low four, which isn't great, but I really hope he's elite. And where's the other guy? Ramirez definitely is an elite defenseman. Um, so yeah, he's going to be sweet in the future. And that's pretty much it. I think I had like one goalie that we were looking at further back here too. But yeah, that's pretty much who I've got lined up for the draft. That's where we're going to be taking in most of our rounds. Um, and yeah, we will get to it to start off the next episode. But we do have to make some trades starting off the draft here too. So yeah, let's get this Clifford Chance guy scouted one more time. Really good save percentage, but... Uh, yeah, that is pretty much what we're going to leave. We're going to see retiring players here. And of course, yeah, why would Ovi retire this year? It doesn't make any sense, but Jumbo Joe does retire, as well as Ryan Kessler and a few of those other guys. And Carey Price also calls it quits this year um, there with Laval as, yeah, his career is over indeed. All right, guys, so that is going to wrap it up for this episode. Next episode, we will get to the draft. And uh, yeah, the first draft should be a good one. I think it's going to be uh, a really fun draft. I think we're going to land a lot of good pieces. And man, if we can get our hands on Mapi Michkov, I think we've got our future captain and number one guy there. But uh, yeah, that's really the goal here with this draft. Of course, if we can line up a guy like Christian Stromberg alongside him, that's going to be years of success down the line. But uh, man, oh man, this should be a... Should be a really fun draft and go here coming up. So yeah, we're definitely going to be trading for some picks for some guys, but it's totally going to be worth it at the end of the day. So that is going to be it for me. If you guys are excited for the upcoming draft or, you know, just excited to see what we can do with this team to make it better in the off season, then of course, show your support down below. Leave comments as to what you think we should do at the draft. Of course, I kind of have an idea plan, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Obviously, if Chicago is willing to make a trade with us or something, um, but that is going to be it for this one. This is Ecanio signing out, and until next time.